In this video, we're going to show you how we built this modular plumbing enclosure for our Ford Transit camper van build. We're going to cover everything from the tank, to the plumbing, to the enclosure, to the testing, and even the small details on how to connect everything to the van. My name is Nate. Welcome to Explorers.life. Let's get started. Here's some information about the tank that we're using. This build revolves around the 25 gallon over the wheel well water tank that we got from Titan Vans. It has four threaded inserts on each end to attach the tank to the van and two threaded water inlets on each end for connecting water fill and overflow. We needed to build a frame around the enclosure to attach our plumbing and pumps. We made this out of three quarter inch birch plywood that we measured, cut, and drilled to fit. We drilled pocket holes with our Craig jig, sanded with 220 grit sandpaper, glued it together with pocket screws, and finished it with paste wax. Lastly, we slid the frame into place and bolted it to the threaded inserts of the tank. Next up was plumbing. We used PEX tubing and crimp connectors for most of the plumbing for the system. All threads got Teflon tape and we used tons of T's and L's to get the water where it needed to go. We attached the water pump and accumulator to the pipe coming from the lower water output of the tank and attached that to the frame. Then we connected flexible tubing from the tank to the T coming from the water inlet and to the pump. A tip here is to use a heat gun to make the tubing flexible enough to squeeze over the connectors. We used hose clamps to attach the flexible tubing to the connectors and attach the flexible tubing to the top of the tank for the overflow. We clamped the cold water PEX tubing going to the front of the tank and the hot water returned to the frame on the tank. We put plugs in places where we did not need output pipes, and we used a washing machine outlet box for our future sink connection. We made some flexible tubes for the hot water heater, for the sink connections, and for the shower at the back of the tank, as well as the water inlet. Now it was time for the first test. We rolled the tank into the shop and connected a water hose to the water fill inlet. We did find one little leak that was quickly fixed by just tightening the connection. We tested the overflow and checked around for other leaks. We temporarily connected power to the pump and tested water pressure with the shower. With everything testing good to go, it was time to make the aluminum extrusion frame enclosure. We used by slot aluminum extrusion ordered pre-cut and tapped so that all we had to do was assemble with button head screws in the ends just like we did on our electrical enclosure. Next, we needed to attach the tank to the aluminum extrusion. 
We attached the aluminum extrusion to the tank and did this with just some metal angle that we cut and drilled to fit. We use the bolts to attach to the tank and roll in T-nuts for the extrusion side of the brackets. We attach the tank to the enclosure in four different spots. Next, we needed to make some aluminum extrusion blocks for the panels. We needed to find a way to mount some panels to the outside of the enclosure so that it looked nice and neat, and here's how we did that. We cut some 5 8 inch lengths of extrusion, drilled access holes about a quarter inch from one end, and then tapped that in with a quarter by 20 thread tap. and attach them to the enclosure frame with roll-in T-nuts and tested it out. And then we made about 24 more of those and just attached them all evenly spaced out around where we were going to be putting the panels for the enclosure. Next was time to install the water inlet. We drilled our hole from the inside of the van with a hole saw and then drilled a hole with a long bit so that everything lined up and drilled our hole in the outside and cleaned, prepped, and painted the exposed metal. The inlet attaches with stainless screws, so we pre-drilled the metal and made a wood backer ring for the screws to have something to bite into. We put the inlet into place and tightened it down. And then lastly, we attached the PEX tubing to the water fill. Next was time to install the water gauge. We drilled a hole for our gauge and marked the holes for the screws. We were careful not to drop any plastic inside here. And then we put the gauge in the hole and screwed it down. Next we needed to wire the gauge. Now there are two wires on the gauge that need to run over to our Serbo GX, so we ran two 16 gauge wires from where the plumbing enclosure would live over to our electrical enclosure. With everything finished behind the wall, we put the wall panel back on and cramped a male threaded fitting onto the water inlet. Next was time to make the wood panels for the enclosure. For this we used quarter inch birch and cut it to fit with a circular saw. We made cutouts for the shower, the pump switch, and the sink fill. And then we drilled holes to attach panels to the mounting brackets that we made earlier. Gray sanded them with 220 grit sandpaper on an orbital sander and buffed them with paste wax to finish. Next was wiring for the water pump and the gauge. We attached the wiring to the frame of the tank. Two wires, positive and negative, for the water pump and the two signal wires for the gauge. We stripped off the insulation for all four wires at the back of the enclosure and connected the positive and negative to the pump with lever nuts and then put lever nuts on the signal wires that would eventually connect to the signal wires that we just ran through the wall to the Servo GX. At the front of the enclosure, we crimped on some spade connectors for the positive wire where the switch was going to go to turn our water pump off and on. 
and then we connected Anderson connectors to the positive and negative wires that would connect to the Anderson ports that we installed in the walls throughout the van for powering the units. And lastly, we connected the two signal wires to the gauge with lever nuts. And here's where we are as of now. For the back of the enclosure, we actually planned on installing this nice hatch so that we could easily access our drain valve. Unfortunately, the hatch was hitting the rear door jam of the van and it didn't fit. You win some, you lose some. But Steph suggested some thumb screws for the entire back panel, which will probably look better anyway, but still give quick access. Next we needed to attach the shower. We put the front panel in place and then attached our shower to the panel. We heated up the tube so it was a bit more flexible and connected our flexible tubes to the shower. Next we needed to attach the sink connections. We put the front panel in place and attached the washing machine outlet that would actually be connecting to the sink in our upcoming kitchen module build. And attached the flexible hoses to the sink fill. We slid the water heater into place and attached it with straps that go around the bottom of the enclosure. We use straps here because this particular heater needs to be removed for winterization, which we can do pretty easily by removing the front panel of the enclosure. Next we needed to drill the drain holes. We drilled our drain holes in the back for the system drain and up front for the hot water heater pressure relief valve. Before we slid the enclosure and tank into place, we put a bit of leftover Thinsula insulation over the wheel well, since wheel wells can get extremely cold, and that particular space will be impossible to heat, much like a wall cavity. Next we made some brackets that would attach the aluminum extrusion to the L-track on the wall and move the enclosure into place and bolted it down. Then we made some brackets that connected the aluminum extrusion to the floor of the van. This means that the tank is connected to the enclosure in four places, and the enclosure is connected to the body of the van in four places. This ain't going nowhere. Next we connected the drain tube. We slid the flexible tubing up from the bottom of the van and connected it with a hose clamp. And then we connected the hot water heater pressure relief valve. We slid flexible tubing into the front drain hole that comes from the hot water heater pressure relief valve that we connected after hours and off camera as that connection needed an additional trip to Ace Hardware. And then we wired the switch for the water pump. Now this is simply a single pole, single throw switch wired the exact same way as we wired the switch for the puck lights in our van. And then we connected the Anderson ports to power the water pump. We attached the Anderson connectors for the pump to the Anderson ports in the walls. This camera angle was impossible to get, but as a refresher, this is what we were connecting to. These are just a nice clean way to get wires from inside of the walls to the outside of the walls with a removable connection. And time for our final test. Lastly, we connected flexible tubing to our water inlet and then connected a water hose to the outside for the final test. Open. 
This is not my fault. This is not the part that they did. None of my shit's leaking. Ultimately, there were no leaks on the inside of this enclosure, and the shower just needs an additional O-ring that fell off, apparently. Lastly, we needed to connect the signal wires from the gauge to the signal wires that go through the wall to the Servo GX. Now, I'm not going to cover programming of the tank gauge in this video as it's pretty specific to our electrical system, but let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a short video showing you how to do that. And our plumbing enclosure is all wrapped up and we are super happy with how it turned out as it's got a ton of features. It looks great and is still fairly modular and removable without too much effort. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.